Hello and welcome to Channels Book Club. My name is Olakunle Kasumo and it's great to be on the show again. Now, this episode is dedicated to the Nigeria International Book Fair. It's the most important and the biggest book fair in Nigeria. Book fairs are very important all over the world and in many ways they define the book cultures of countries around the world. The Nigeria International Book Fair is not different. Now, we have a report on the Nigeria International Book Fair 2022. Enjoy this. The 21st edition of the Nigeria International Book Fair, NIBF, once again, Lagos hosts the most pivotal and longest-running book fair in Nigeria. Present at this year's event are stakeholders in the book ecosystem, including publishers, booksellers, librarians, authors, printers, members of the academia, students, representatives of government, corporate organizations, and non-governmental organizations. Copyright violation a senseless path to tread. Once a site for privacy has now become a site for piracy. Once a foolproof work of art has now become a porous work corrupted on both parts. Who is to blame for it all? Who brought about this great fall? Who started this terrible trend? Was it the beginning or was it the end? Everybody has a past to play in this great crime. The end users who abuse the two, and the regulators who guard the two with no pride. Thank you. The 2022 edition of the annual book fair with the theme, Copyright and Sustainable Growth in the Ecosystem, Setting a New Agenda. The chairman of the Nigeria Book Fair Trust, Badega Adidako, in his welcome address explains the theme. Book piracy, whether in print or digital form, is costing publishing around the world billions of naira or dollars annually. It creates significant harmful effects throughout the book value chain. Author publishers, distributors, and retailers as well as authors and even readers. Other form of piracy includes translation without copyright owner's uh, permission, illegal ebook fashions, unauthorized photocopying of academic materials, and the abuse of publication rights. All of these are, are conceived to be the biggest challenge and pose a huge threat uh, to our industry at large. I sincerely believe that if we get it right in the area of copyright, the entire narrative of the book ecosystem will change for good. It is based on this uh, backdrop that we have decided to inch this year's team on copyright and sustainable growth in the book industry setting new agenda. The national librarian, Professor Chingwe Anunobi, who doubles as the chairperson of the occasion and representative of the Minister of Education, bears her mind on the theme. Copyright is important as it helps to protect the value of an author, academic, researcher's work. By giving the originator of the work the ability to protect it from unlicensed and unaccredited usage. The Director General of Nigeria Copyright Commission, John Nassane, while delivering the conference keynote paper, explains why books must be protected from piracy. The book is an economic asset for a country's growth. The book is a catalyst for mental growth and social integration. The book is a dynamic tool for historical documentation and generational bonding. And I'm happy we talked about the cultural aspect of 
what you can do with the book. The book is a medium of mass communication and enlightenment. It is a sustaining pillar for education, for teaching, for learning, for research. It is a tool for national integration, cultural and social cohesion. It is a vehicle for cross-cultural understanding and diplomacy. So the book is there as a vehicle, is a springboard for innovation. The book is also a pivot of stability. And more importantly, or more interestingly, it is a fountain of pleasure and leisure to the general reader. Stakeholders deliberate on the conference keynote paper. I said some of our members, booksellers, who deal in curriculum books, um, school curriculum materials, some others import their, 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 their final products. I think government too can help with these multiple levies and taxes that they have to deal with. You see, because at the point of even obtaining the import permits to register your form M before you can bring in your container, you can be asked to pay as much as between 1 million to 1.5 million naira. How do you survive? By the time you do all of that and then you pay your clearing charges, you still have to settle the supplier duty and all of that. The books come at very, very high costs. And that's what the pirates strive on. According to the definition of an ecosystem, if we say Nigerian book ecosystem, it means that we are talking of the Nigerian space, which means that books developed in Nigeria, meant for Nigerian audience, published by Nigerian authors, to be sold by Nigerian booksellers, must be printed in, within the shores of Nigeria. Immediately you realize that your books are, your books are becoming popular, make sure that you have them available at all times. Affordability drives away pirates. The 2022 book fair is unveiled by the chairman of the occasion. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The National Librarian, accompanied by the chairman of the MBFT and other participants, tour the various book stands at the fair. The fair continues with various sessions which enable collaboration among stakeholders. Okay, it says what's the size of the angle marked with the letter A in that diagram up there? Some of the many captivating sessions at this year's fair include the mathematics and spelling competitions for pupils. Intricacy. 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 Correct. The executive secretary of NIBF, Abiodun Amotubi, explains the progress made in the fair over the years. This year is far better because last year 
we had 55 exhibitors uh, at the book fair, and this year we have, I think so far now we have 78. And uh, last year, our foreign exhibitors could not attend due to COVID-19. But this year now, I think we have about eight uh, foreign exhibitors participating in the book fair. Uh, we are from India, we are from uh, uh, Turkey, we are from Malaysia, we are from uh, Singapore, we are from uh, other countries of Africa, from Cote d'Ivoire, we are from Botswana, and we have some other, uh, also we have uh, trade visitors from, uh, from South Africa, from Ghana, and from other countries of the world. So uh, put together in, in the aspect of exhibitors, like I said earlier, we, we have 78 compared to 55 we, we had last year. Nigerians don't read is a common saying, but participants at the fair argue against this. Nigerians are voracious readers. Nigerians are ambitious people. Nigerians want to make it. Every Nigerian wants to make it. And the only way they can make it is uh, education. You can see, particularly the southern part of the country, how people are passionate about going to school. Primary, secondary, and uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, university education. It's only true education. And education cannot take place in a vacuum without publishing. Books, people have to use books, isn't it? And uh, uh, students have to use books. We have 197 universities. Okay, we now say the nation do, uh, doesn't read, has no reading culture. We have a boyard reading culture. The reading culture we have is utilitarian reading culture. People utilize reading for, for their professions to achieve their life ambition. Like the Frankfurt Book Fair, Bologna Children's Book Fair, and Shajad International Book Fair, among others, the NIBF is ultimately aimed at promoting reading culture in the country. However, considering the nation's population of about 200 million, the reality is that there's a relatively low interest in books, as only 8,000 people physically participated in this year's book fair. The need for more government funding for the annual book fair is glaring, so is the need for better private sector participation. But all in all, the NIBF continues to grow and attracts participation from home and abroad. Perhaps it will one day be able to compete with the very best around the world. I hope you enjoyed that. To round up the episode today, let's have a reading. Hi, everyone. 
My name is Ufuma Ee. I'm the author of the Naive Wife Trilogy. That is Rachel's Choice, Rachel's Diary, and Rachel's Hope, which I just released in August this year. I'm also the author of The Church Girl, um, Perfect Love, An Emotional Fat, and so many other amazing <laughs> Christian fiction novels about love and marriage. Um, I actually started writing these stories in 2016 when I wrote my first one, The Church Girl, as a short story on my blog. And um, from there, I just continued writing um, these stories on my blog and people told me they needed to be in books. So 2017, I started publishing books. And today I have 28 published titles and one on the way um actually probably two on the way because i'm trying to work on one for christmas but <laughs> yeah we're at it and uh, i hope to my books to be published into film um, people tell me that all the time that my stories are so interesting that they should be in film and i really love that to have that kind of partnership and uh, today i would like to read uh, on uh, read the naive wife uh, Rachel's Choice, which is the first book in the Naive Wife trilogy. Um, so the Naive Wife trilogy is uh, basically a story, Rachel's story. <laughs> so we have Rachel's Choice, Rachel's Diary, and Rachel's Hope. It talks about how she met the man she married and the um, challenges she went through in her decision making and how she eventually settled on her decision. and. Um, the challenges she went through in her marriage and uh, things that she discovered afterwards about her husband that she didn't she didn't do her legwork before and uh, Rachel's Hope looks at um, you know her life in the throes of the marriage like is she going to continue is she going to fight it out what's God going to do about it you know so it brings in so many things that you know relate to marriage singleness relationships, love, romance, a fictional story with a difference. <laughs> so let me read chapter four of Rachel's Choice. It's the day of Rochelle's traditional wedding and the house is in an uproar. In every room, there are aunties at work making preparations and last minute adjustments to things. Auntie Faith is busy making adjustments to Mrs. Eden's blouse in her bedroom. Auntie Blessing is tying the galet for the bridesmaids in the family living room. Auntie Joy is doing the bride's makeup in her bedroom. Auntie Pat Patricia is supervising the caterers in the kitchen, while Auntie Eloho is supervising those setting up canopies and chairs outside. Rachel doesn't have any work assigned to her. She also needs to get herself made up, styled and dressed, and be there to assist her sister with anything she needs. Their cousins are also on ground for quick errands. The only people who seem to be idle are the privileged sons and older married fathers who are already dressed and chatting in the guest lounge downstairs where the TV is blaring in competition with the DJ outside. Come and sit down, let me touch you up. Auntie Joy beckons to Rachel when Rachel stands up to go to the bathroom. I'm okay, Auntie. I beg, sit down. Auntie Joy hisses. You don't know that after Rochelle, all eyes are on you? Isn't it bad enough that she should marry before you? and then you don't even want to look your best. Rachel sits down to avoid more talk on the subject, but it doesn't stop Auntie Joy. When I was your age, I already had two children now. She continues. Hey, Rachel looks up to see who owned the deep, sultry voice. She's face to face with AGK. How hadn't she seen him coming? Hey, she smiles back. What a party. Are you enjoying yourself? She shrugs. Yeah, thanks. Are you? Honestly, 
he asked cheekily. She looks into his eyes. They are deep and seem to swallow her in. Mm-hmm. He leans in and whispers, I am now. She can't help the beam that breaks open her lips into a wide smile and then a giggle. You're funny. AJK also giggles. I'm glad you think so, if that's a good thing. She shrugs. Mm. You don't talk much, he observes. Rachel takes in a deep breath. It was a good conversation. It was a good observation. I reserved my energy for the radio station. I'm not very social in real life, unfortunately. I get, you look good though. She instinctively looks down at her two-piece native attire, which she thought was unflattering. She didn't really like the color, and it was a bit itchy in places, but it sure made her boobs look big, she noticed. She decides to be polite and accept the compliment. Looking into his face, she smiles and says, thanks. Hey, beautiful. The enchantment is broken and Rachel tears her face away to look at Doug, who just joined them. She'd almost forgotten that they were in a party in a big open room filled with all her family. Her heart rate increases suddenly as she takes in all the noise and commotion of the wedding. Hi, Doug. She mutters breathily. He pulls her in for a hug and then slaps palms with AJK, whose demeanor has changed. What's up? Doug asks, looking between the pair, his arms still holding Rachel close, though she seems uncomfortable. She eventually releases herself from his embrace and leans back against the wall. Nothing, just chatting, HK says. He looks between Rachel and Doug. Sensing that there's something between them, he makes an excuse to leave. He swallows. Let me go and see how Ikeni is doing. Talk to you later. Yeah, man, Doug says, smiling gratefully at his friend. Rachel watches after AJK, wondering when they would have a chance to chat again. For some reason, she liked him. It made her heart smile, which was a very rare occurrence. What was it about him? A penny for your thoughts? Rachel looks up at Doug. She'd almost forgotten that he was still there. She swallows. I just remember that I need to do something, she says, stepping away. Oh, okay, we can catch up later. Yeah. Oh my God, I just lied to that man. So I just finished reading chapter four of Rachel's Choice. And it was about um, her sister's wedding, um, traditional and white wedding and reception. And the pressures that uh, Rachel, the older sister felt um, from her aunties and other people about the fact that she was single and without a boyfriend. Um, so I think a lot of women, um, young ladies will relate with this pressure that Rachel felt. Um, not, not just Nigerian women, I think this is a very typical pressure. And, um, and there's so many lessons in this book, you know, showing the struggle that Rachel went through in the decision-making process. Um, there are two men, Doug and AJK, who were bidding for her heart. And uh, at the end of the book, she makes a choice on which one to marry. Um, and she has to live with that. And she talks about how her marriage is in Rachel's diary. And in Rachel's hope, we see what becomes of Rachel from what she's been through in her marriage based on her choice. And this is where we have to end the show today. As always, we'll be very delighted to get your feedback through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. My name is Olapule Kasumu. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.